Hi everyone! Today we're going to make a mini project that sends a text message every time it recognizes my face. We'll also deploy this onto a Raspberry Pi to run independently without an external computer. In this video, we'll briefly talk about what a Raspberry Pi is, and then look at the architecture of this video and the setup for Raspberry Pi. And then we'll do an interactive demo covering how to make our API to connect to, then code the face recognition to call the API every time my face is detected. First, let's talk about what a Raspberry Pi actually is. A Raspberry Pi is a low-cost credit card sized computer that uses an external keyboard and mouse and connects to a monitor or a TV as a screen. This is our Raspberry Pi 4 and let me show you all the parts of it. These are four USB ports and as you can see I already have my mouse connected. There's two USB 3 ports and two USB 2 ports. And then this is the audio jack that's for connecting microphones and speakers. Next to it is the camera port, and this flimsy thing attached is the camera. This is what we're going to use for the face recognition. Let me put this back here. This is a mini HDMI cable, and next to it is the USB-C port. This connects to the power supply. And then we have three microprocessors here with heat sink. And then lastly, these are the pins for the GPIO, which stands for the General Purpose Input-Output Pins, for connecting any electronic parts. All right, now let's go over the architecture of what we'll do in the video. First, we'll reuse the face recognition code from last video, connecting to Python and OpenCV, all in our Raspberry Pi. Then, using Azure Logic Apps, we'll connect our program to Twilio, a technology to send text and SMS messages. All in all, what it'll do is send a text message to my dad's phone when my face is detected, and stops. Raspberry Pi has a pretty elaborate setup, especially on OpenCV, which could not be used as is, and I had to compile its source code with my dad's help. Although it has 4 GB of RAM and is the fastest Raspberry Pi that was available to us, it still took a long time to install packages and setup. It took over 2 hours on this Raspberry Pi, so if you're planning on doing this project, I recommend you set aside some time to install all the packages and modules. Also, if you want to be able to connect to Raspberry Pi remotely, VNC is a great software, and I'll be using it in the demo so I can record the screen. Alright, now let's get to the demo. What I want to do is create our API in Logic Apps, so let me go there. And here is my Azure Portal home. So let me go to create a resource. And if you want a detailed explanation on Azure Logic Apps, check out my other video, link in the description. So what I want to do is search for Logic App, Logic App, and here it is, create, because we're going to create a new Logic App, and the resource group, I already have one, Logic App name, I'll just say send text, and then location, I'll keep it all same, tags, we don't need that, review and create create. Okay, it says initializing deployment up here, submitting, okay. Okay, it says your deployment is complete. So now we'll press go to resource to edit it, and it goes to our Logic Apps Designer. The first thing I want to do is start with the trigger. So I'm going to use the when an HTTP request is received. Let's make it a get method so we can call it from Python easily. So I'll add a parameter and it'll be method. And then inside method we can add get. Okay, now we're gonna add a new step and we're gonna connect to a technology called Twilio which sends text or SMS messages. So Twilio, it's loading, okay, here it is. We want to send a text message. From phone number, I already have one because my dad has an account. And then the two phone number, just add it in. Okay, and then the text of the mis message, I'll just say a wild Rishab was spotted. <laughs> spotted. Because we want it to send that every time my face is detected. Alright, and now if we save it, then it gives us a URL, and we can use that URL to call our API. 
All right, so let me go back here and it says HTTP get URL. So let me copy this. And now if to test it, if we open up a new tab and paste it, then it should send my dad a text message. Wait for it. And there it is. Cool. All right, now that we have our API in place, we can actually code it in Raspberry Pi. So let me go to my VNC Viewer Raspberry Pi. I've connected through VNC. I'll go to my file because I want to edit that. Here it is. It's a bit slow because it's a Raspberry Pi. It's single board. And then this is the file we want to edit, livevideo.py. And then I'm going to right click it and click Thony Python IDE. That's the default text editor for Raspberry Pi. This is the same code from last video, and we're going to add on to it to make it call an API every time it recognizes my face. The first thing we're going to do is import a library called requests. This will help us call our API. So I'll say import requests. Okay, cool. And now I'm going to change this main while true loop to be driven by a Boolean variable called trigger event. So I'll say trigger underscore event equals to false. And then now I'll also initialize the variable to be false. So I'll say trigger underscore event because that's the same thing we added here. And then that will be equal to false. False. All right, let me scroll down. And instead of printing this message, I'll change the trigger event value to true so that it comes out of the main while loop. So I'll say trigger underscore event equals true. Now outside of this main while loop, we need to check if the trigger event was fired. It also comes out of the loop if you press Q as shown in this statement. Now outside of this main while loop, we need to check if the trigger event was fired. So after the break, I'll write if trigger underscore event equals true, then I'll send a get request to call the API that sends the text message. So for that, I'll write, I'll write right here, requests dot get, this is where that library comes in, and then parentheses, and then inside the parentheses we'll have double quotes, or single quotes, it doesn't matter, and then here's where we'll put our API. So let me go get that again. Uh, here it is. Then let me copy it. Control C. Then let me go back to Raspberry Pi here. Now we can paste it, and then it should work. Okay, cool. This is the API URL. Let's save it. All right, now we finished our code. I think we're ready to run. So Thony Python already has a button that says run here. So let me click that. And let me grab my camera here. And here's the video. As you can see, I'm covering up my face so that it doesn't recognize. But if I take it off, then wait for it. It recognized, but oh, it threw an error. Let me put the camera down for a sec. Okay, all right, let me press stop. Okay, there. As you can see, it threw an error saying that name true is not defined. And oh, that's because I didn't capitalize true. That's now fixed, so if we save it, control S. And now we'll run it again, okay. So I'll press run here. Then let me fix this camera. All right, it turned on the video. And now if I take off this, then it recognizes my face. Wait, it'll call the API in a bit. Okay, as you can see, it stopped. Let me put down that. All right, cool, it sent it. Nice. So that concludes our demo, and we successfully sent a text message on face recognition from Raspberry Pi. In this example, I just triggered a text message when a face is recognized, whereas in real examples, it could be alerting security or saving the details in a database, or triggering some other kind of transaction. 
We'll keep exploring more of such cases in the future. Thanks very much for watching. If you all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any face recognition questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.